Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in Lakeland, Florida, and we're going to be waterproofing a crawl space um, underneath this house. This is a special uh, project, very difficult one, probably one of the most difficult ones that I've attempted to do. Uh, let me show you why. So this home, beautiful home, we're looking at the back of it. Um, they've got the lanai and the pool, and it's a two-story home. It was actually moved here from another property and it has a crawl space and if you can see that opening it is very tight the floor is right there at the bottom of that uh, siding so we've got about 18 inches maybe 14 inches in places the reason that we're not doing the outside wall is because number one they've got the pool that runs you know back there what you're looking at at the far end is a garage that's a slab and of course out front utilities and air conditioners are not a problem um, we could do this wall on the outside still difficult but you could do it but they also have a porch so we really can't get down to the footer on the front wall and of course you can see the drive and like I said the garage is on the other side so it has to be done on the inside to properly remove the water and this is the one where their ducks are full of water so you might remember me showing you their air handler and how it broke in half and you know these things are full of water first thing we've got to do is move all this out of the way there's lots of debris down here we got to get that sump basin over here that's part A <laughs> and my head is right up against the floor between the joist. You can see the joist right here and the floor. This is a tight spot, but we'll get it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull a lot of stuff out of here and start digging. So, first thing we have to do is have a place to put our soil. Um, we, again, not much headroom, but we still got to be able to put this dirt someplace as we excavate. And basically, I'm just going to throw it out of the trench. This is a pretty big hole they dug out. To put this in and um, so we've got places to put it but I've already found groundwater <laughs> figured I would but let's go ahead and keep digging see what we got probably the hardest part of this is getting back here you know I mean once you're back here great but it's several trips to get your tools, your pit, your pump. And then we've also got to bring pipe and, of course, gravel. That makes life really fun, right? <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's just a job, and hopefully there's not any kakina, you know, stone down here. But if there is, well, that's what you got to do. <laughs> it's whatever it takes. And... Take your time. If you get tired, stop. If you get a cramp, that's usually what happens in a tight space. If you get a cramp, you want to make sure that you stretch out and go from there. There is some tree roots down here, which is not surprising. I'm hoping that they're not giant roots where I have to crawl back out again. <laughs> And get another tool because that wears you out more than anything is you're having to go in and out you can see the roots and they don't seem like much but they stop that shovel from getting down in there so sorry while I move around a little bit to get a little bit better leverage <clears throat> And no, I'm not going to show the whole portion of this video. This will take about, it doesn't take long, probably take 20 minutes to dig this out. Maybe not even that. Depends on what we find when we get a little deeper. Remember, it's going down two feet. And it has to be at that depth in order for you, A, to have that pump actuate, and B, to be deep enough to collect the footer pipe, the French drain, some people call it, that's going to run around the perimeter 
to help pick up the groundwater because that's what's going on here. It's groundwater. And when it, hurricanes come and big rains, but she told me that the hurricane really did them in. Not surprising that, you know, the, the whole crawl space was flooded. Remember that opening that I showed you? That opening was underwater. <laughs> That's how much water gets in here. Okay, so we've got our sump basin, modified sump basin. Um, down, it goes down two feet. Let's just see. You can see it's got a steel reinforced sidewall and reinforced lid. And it actually will be so tight in here and nice. No worry of collapsing, anything like that. It's large enough to handle the M53 and the M98, the bigger uh, half horsepower. So next we're going to go ahead and do a footer pipe. And we're going to bring an inlet line into the basin right here. And it's going to go back to the wall. And, of course, it's going to travel all around the interior perimeter of the crawl space. And the reason that we moved it off the wall is because we want to get it a little closer to where they've got their air handler. I would assume they're going to put this back uh, in the same place. And uh, this way... If it does, you know, if water doesn't go into the footer pipe, it'll definitely go into the sump basin because we're going to perforate that and surround it with gravel. <laughs> so, yeah, I know it's dark in here and you can see I'm sweating already. Um, that only took about 20 minutes. It probably took 15 minutes to get back here. But um, so I'm going to go ahead and start the footer pipe. And you've seen that before, but we'll go over that again so that you have a, a real good grasp of how this waterproofing system works. And let me get some more light. There we go. <laughs> and if you have to do this, you know, in your crawl space, you're a DIY guy. Uh, this is a tough job um, for a, one person to do. Be prepared. Um, take some breaks. Try to get all your tools and everything back to the job, you know, the excavation area before you have to, you know, start digging. And it'll go so much better. And the other thing is, you know, keep your smile because you can cuss and you can swear and all those things or you could just laugh and your day will be so much better uh, I promise you not just in working with what we do but in life in general okay so we'll just start right here in the corner and a secret you want to use a smaller shovel not that great big eight inch wide one but a six inch wide one and the reason being is that if you make an eight inch wide trench, you know, with your big shovel, you're going to pour a whole lot of gravel in here, um, you know, to fill it up. So, but this isn't hard. Yes, I'm laying on my belly and yes, I'm in the corner. So I'm going to move this twice, but I'm right at the level right here that I need to be. And it goes really quick. I'm just going to pull it out of the way, but we're still going to work backwards. As we go, let's see if I can get it over here. Hard to find a spot for the camera, guys. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it or not. <laughs> but um, we're still going to work backwards. And we just take a shovel out. And we scrape it clean. You can hear me hitting that footer. I'm right beside it. And we're deep enough. Because we don't want to be below the footer. We want to be right at the top, the bottom of the top. That's hard to explain. But I showed you, you know, previously what I'm talking about. But yeah, I mean, in just a few seconds, you can see we've got a trench dug pretty quick. So it makes quick progress. You can see our trench right along the side of the footer. It's actually going all the way back to that corner wall. Try to get a little bit more light back there, but it's pretty dark. But this only took, I don't know, a half hour. <laughs> and yeah, you can see the dirt is laying right on top of me. But we'll take this and just grate it off, no problem. Um, again, the hardest part in here really isn't the digging. It's bringing in the gravel. And, you know, we may try to use a different system here because of what we found on that footer uh, that holds up the, the main floor joists you know the piers um but yeah we'll figure that out but yeah this is going quick guys okay so i've got the sump basin and i've dug the trench along the front wall 
We've got that far so you know today. I'm going to do one more, and that's in the addition. There's another another crawl space, so we're going to put a sump pump in there and dig that footer tile. But to take a look, so you can see, so inside the crawl space, we've got the footer trench dug all the way across the front, and we started down this side, but here in the center of the home, we found a, a beam that sets on block without any footer and it does not attach to the actual foundation the footer over here so we really can't go that direction I'll come down the wall a little ways but we can't go past that pier because it would just erode it and would cause buckling and things in the floor so in the back crawl space we're able to do this wall as well as this wall that runs all the way across and most of the water is actually in that corner over there but um, that doesn't matter I'm just telling you that's, that's where most of the water is over there and maybe it comes from this channel drain nice three inch um, brand new NDS channel drain they must have just put pavers down looking good but we're getting there and we're gonna take the sump pump back this is a Zoller M98 we're gonna use a half horsepower pump because not only are we gonna lift it out of that crawl space but we're going to send it all the way out to the street, which is way out there. So we need a big pump. So we're digging pit number two and really tight headroom. <laughs> We've got to get down two feet and we're using just a little shovel. You might have seen a video I did before up in Jacksonville. Uh, same thing. And it is not an easy task because you only get out, you know, just a little bit of soil each time. But we'll get it. And if you're doing it yourself, I don't know, you can sing, you can, you can cuss, <laughs> which I hope you don't do. But, you know, when I'm digging stuff like this, I don't know if you're a, an old World, uh, World War II buff, movie buff, but there's a movie called The Great Escape. And it's got Charles Bronson and um, Steve McQueen. Lots of, lots of major British actors. And of course, they're POWs, you know, trapped in a camp. And they're, what they're going to do is they're going to dig a tunnel and try to get, you know, like two, three hundred men out and to escape to cause chaos for the Nazis for the Germans. And I always think about Steve McQueen, or I'm sorry, I always think about Charles Bronson, and he's the tunneler, and he actually is claustrophobic, but he's the best tunnel digger, you know, wherever he's been, he's been locked up in the prison camps for many times, you know, so many times, and he's the one that digs the tunnel, and it's just, it's really funny. I think about stuff, and probably you will too. Anyways, let's take a look at what we got going on here so you can see it. So, there are other ways to get under your crawl space. And you could, you could cut the floors. Um, you know, there might be tile up there or wood. You got to have all that removed. And you can come down through this 16 inch opening on the joist to get down here. That's all great, but you still got to get under here to dig if you're going to put a sump pump in here or do any excavation like French drain footer pipe. So I've always found it much easier and much more cost effective to come, you know, crawl underneath of here, spend the time, do it right. And once this is in, this water that floods, remember we're in a hurricane zone and when that water comes from the hurricane we're talking 20 30 40 inches of water um, you need something that's going to be able to take that water out and that's what this is really all about so you can see i completed the footer trench um, this is not down below the footer it's just right alongside the footer and it goes all the way back about 40 feet back to where you saw me put the sump basin in and what we'll do when we bring the crew back is we're gonna lay just a small base of gravel down at the bottom of the trench 
and then we'll put perforated pipe and then we'll cover all of that with gravel all the way up to over across the top of that footer and remember how the system works this is a true example of a French drain it has nothing to do with water that comes down and wrapping it with fabric it has nothing to do with that French drains perforated pipe surrounded by gravel um, water rises up into your system okay it's time to set up the Zoller M98 and we're going to set it, some of it up out here because it's so hard to do down in the crawl space. But you start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter that screws into the port. Zoller builds a great pump and things are easy. So screw this on there hand tight, as tight as you can make it with your hand. Good. Next, we're going to put a small riser on here. And the riser is going to accept our check valve. So I'm going to go ahead and, and glue that piece in. This is an all-in-one glue. Everybody asks about that. You know, where's your primer? <laughs> Push and hold. Perfect. Next, we need to drill a pressure relief valve. A little hole, 3 16 inch. Uh, drill bit. It's got to be between the pump and the check valve because it can get airlocked. So let's go ahead and drill a little hole. Perfect. Now we're going to set our check valve in. Remember what a check valve does. It only allows water to flow one direction. And if you look carefully, you can see those arrows are pointing upwards, telling me that's the direction of flow. No matter what uh, check valve you buy, there's going to be some kind of marking on there for you to tell you which way it goes. So these are held together with stainless steel no hub adapters. Take your handy dandy black and decker, 5 16 inch nut driver, put it on there just as tight as you can. Tighten up the other two clamps, but leave this one on the top loose because you're gonna still continue to plumb once we put it down inside the pit. So this is ready to go down in the sump basin, but you can see how quickly that set up. That was too easy, right? Okay, let's go ahead and go down below, take some materials. It's gonna take a little bit to get all the tools and things that you need all the way to the front of that crawl space, but it's just part of what you gotta do. So yeah, <laughs> it probably took 15 minutes just to bring this Zoller M98 back to our sump basin. That thing weighs 40 plus pounds. And I mean, if you look to see what we have to go through to get it in here, and, and you can't really see it, but <laughs> you know, again, you just have to work with what you got and you just do it. So you can see, you know, how it sets up. Remember that pit's two feet deep. We've got Remember I set it up outside to show you, but there's a small riser that comes up to the check valve. Check valve has arrows pointing upwards, tells you the direction of water flow. Then we've got a riser coming up, a 90, and then we're gonna discharge. I'm just gonna let it lay there for a second. We're gonna let it discharge all the way over. You can see the light back there. We're gonna go right out through that vent temporarily. That's the driveway side and it should as the pump kicks on, it should let that water run down the drive temporarily. But we don't want to go that direction and trench through that driveway to get it out to the front. Much easier on this side, although it's not that easy. Um, there is a vent over there, but I'd rather go out on the driveway temporarily um, just because I know that that water won't come back down into the crawl space. So we finally got the pump, pump back here. Now I'm going to cut a riser from the bottom or the top of the check valve. I'm going to bring it up here towards these joists and temporarily I'm going to send it out through the vent. Um, that's about as far as I'm going to get today. We've got a uh, hundred percent chance of rain coming for the next few days. So we don't want this crawl space to flood. So we've got to get a pump down in here and that way we're able to come back and work even during the rain. This thing is going to keep it pumped out. But so I got to cut a, a riser. 
and I'm just going to make a measurement using my saw and basically it's going to be two two saws long <laughs> I know I know but we need to get started with something right so we'll cut this off you know in addition to bringing back the pump you also have to bring back your pipe your saw your drills and your fittings your glue all these things you know i put all that in a box but you still got to move it all back here there's there's no other way around it so here we go let's just make the measurement the dry fit what i'm doing and i'll show you in a second is i'm just putting it down into the check valve and somewhere around here there it is i've got this other box the pump box and it's got my handy dandy <laughs> black and deckers i always take two of them with me i know that camera goes out of focus it's because it's so dark but i always bring two black and deckers one has a permanently fixed 5 16 inch nut driver because it's always so full of sand i can't get it out of there but so basically you can see and i'm going to put a 90 on it right here and then we're just going to plumb it with inch and a half some fittings and tie it all together and just go right out to temporarily right out through the vent and then when we come back we'll use our hammer drill we'll actually go that way um, and core the wall and bring it out because we're going to go down that side of the driveway um, a lot of work outside as well but a great great job for the do-it-yourselfer <laughs> i just realized i've got so much I just realized I have so much dirt on me <laughs> and, and you can't wipe it off because there's just so much dirt on you. But anyways, let's go ahead and um, tighten all this, these clamps up. Remember, they're held together with no hubs from the check valve. And then I need to get the extension cord back here. I thought I had brought it back, but I didn't. So I've got to crawl back out again and do that one more time. Okay, so you can kind of see the riser of the pump back there you can see our discharge line turn around here it goes all the way out it goes through the vent and we'll take it out there and do something with it and to give you some idea of crawling through a tight crawl space just bear with me and you can enjoy crawling on your belly <laughs> to get back out that part was easy but look what we got to go through as we get over here i'm just using my elbows to pull me along but you can kind of see I'm going under a duct here's that main beam and whoever put this up here they put it on blocks but there's no footer and it does not attach to, you can see it doesn't attach to the main foundation. And I'm sure that that floor is going to warp in 20 years or less. Um, it's too bad because that's major, major work to jack all that up and pour footers in this crawl space. So... Yeah, we got to go through that maze <laughs> and then turn left and we're almost there. But yeah, some things that I've noticed down here, you can see all the electrical wires just laying everywhere and water lines hanging here, hanging there. But the most interesting thing is, can you see this two inch pipe? All right, that's some type of plumbing and it runs down hill. It goes across and it turns and it runs back uphill <laughs> and it ties into, you can, you can see the rise, another two inch line which ties into the main line. I mean, you know it's full of water, whatever it is, but it just amazes me what people do. Um, and the sad thing is, or maybe it's the funny thing, is they believe what they tell you it's kind of like the French drain that lasts forever. I mean, these people really believe what they say. Anyways, let's keep on crawling. 
Sorry for the jittery, jumpy video. Uh, I'm going through that maze of leftover galvanized pipe. That is so you can't even move it. You'd have to cut it to get it out of here. <laughs> and we'd be happy to do that at another time. But yeah, you can see where we're at. Still got the main sewer line to go underneath. And if you look, you see that box? That's the Zoller pump box. That's how tight that fit is. And grab my saw. <laughs> my foot's stuck behind me. <laughs> Got to go over these 220 volt wires that are just laying everywhere here. I don't know if they're connected or not, but got to be careful. And we're almost to the exit. Throw that saw over there. We're almost there. What a fun job, right? Something the DIY guy can do easily. <laughs> but you know, I know this is a long portion of the video and you can see how long it took me to get just out of the area where we plug the pump in. Coming underneath of this sewer line. This is the tightest spot. And of course, it's right at the beginning of the crawl space. Makes it real hard to get your materials in and out if you're gonna do some work down here. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. it may not be easy, but you can do it. And for those of you that wonder how long it actually took, you know, I got here right about 8 o'clock. It's 12.30. So all by myself, I've been down there, what, four and a half hours? So we're unrolling our perforated pipe. You can see him. He's taking it clear across the street, 100-foot roll. But we'll pull it back over here. And what we're doing is we're going down into this crawl space. You can see some of the gravel we got right here. And you can see the opening for the vent that we have to go through. But basically, we're going to pull out my temporary discharge from the pump. And we're going to pull that corrugated pipe through that small opening. And you see this piece of gutter. This is where we're actually going to try to pour our gravel uh, down through. We'll get it into a bucket below and be able to move that through. Okay, so we're under the crawl space. <clears throat> the crew's coming back. We got Matt coming in first. And what they're doing is they're going to bring in some buckets because we've got to get gravel into these buckets to get it to come through that vent that I showed you outside, fill up our bucket, and then move that gravel across our pipe. And this is a really slow process because of that sewer line right there. And you'll see as we push the bucket under here, make sure you push the bucket backwards because it may or may not go under there. You might have to dig it out. But you'll see as we come through, we're also bringing a couple of shovels with us just in case. Although remember, I dug all the footer trench um, to begin with, but you never know. There's always some room that you might need a shovel. And yeah, turn your bucket around and just force it under. It should go if you force it. There you go. I'll grab it over here if I can get back there. Yep. But you can see just how tight it is just to get a bucket underneath of this thing. And that gives you some idea of just how tight this crawl space actually is. I mean, well, how wide's a bucket? 12 inches? <laughs> it's tight. Very tight. Might have to scoop a little bit of sand out. There's a lot of electrical wires right there, but still should be all right. There we go. That should come. Yep, perfect. So we'll grab that one and just move them out of the way. Now I'm gonna scoot back because there's not enough room for me to stay here um, and they can, they can get through. It's real tight right there, Matt, but you will get under, okay? Okay, I'm gonna move on back a little bit. There's another guy behind Matt, so. <laughs> but I'm gonna head on down this direction and we gotta get the buckets through these uh, galvanized pipes. But remember, I got that basin back here, which is actually a little bit wider than all of that. So they should be good. 
I'm not gonna pull your shovels. You guys can grab those. No, yeah. Okay. Let's keep on crawling. And I'm just letting it run because remember, it's so fun for the D DIY guy. <laughs> this is just something they can easily do themselves. And uh, you can see why she had estimates in that thirty to forty thousand dollar range. It wasn't that somebody didn't want to do it. Number one is they didn't know how, and number two, they just couldn't. So you can see those pi those old galvanized pipes. They're nothing to worry about at all. They're just in the way, <laughs> but the bucket still should go through there. You're better maybe off on your belly. Yeah, um, I, I'm one-handed. <laughs> yeah, that came through nicely. You doing okay, Chance? I'm fine, bro. Okay, good. You got your you got a light, Chance? Okay, good. So we're about halfway back. They got a light, so I'm going to move on. Okay, so you can see we've got our footer pipe. We pulled it through that vent. Um, we pulled it all the way down, and you can see how it sits. It sits just at the just below the top. Whoops, just below the top of the footer. <sighs> And it runs all the way from wall to wall. See it going down there. And next we're gonna bring in the gravel. And basically we're gonna pour that gravel through the vent into buckets and slowly move that gravel. We're gonna cover this entire trench with gravel. And the way the system works is, it's a French drain. Water floods up into the system through the voids of the gravel into the pipe and is carried away. And where we're gonna carry it away, is to a sump pump so right over here let me get over here i have to turn around <laughs> you saw me do this the other day is right here we've got a line that comes over to the sump basin and we temporarily have it going the other direction but we're going to go out over there we already cored the wall and we'll send this pipe right through there i'm going to do that while the guys finish up bringing the gravel in so here's the French drain, people call it, but we call it a footer pipe because it runs along the footer. You can see the gravel. Remember, there's perforated pipe, and it turns and runs all the way down through that trench all the way to the other end of the crawl space. And as water rises and or comes through the footer, it's going to enter our system and be carried away. So these guys are coming out of the crawl space. I'm gonna move the buckets. Here comes Chance, he's coming out, and you can see how, how hard it is just to get out of the crawl space. He, of course, Chance made it look really easy. <laughs> he made it look really easy, but it really is difficult to get in and out of here. We're gonna leave a couple shovels in there, take a little break, and um, then we'll go back to the second sump pump, and um, do some work there, bring the gravel and pipe in and things like we just So the first thing we did was we went ahead and drilled the four inch opening right here. That's the inlet line. So that will accept the line that comes from the trench. The footer tile is gonna come around a turn. It's just gonna come right into the basin. Yeah, there's a little dirt in there. We'll get that out. <laughs> uh, now we're gonna plumb the pump just like we did up front and like you've seen me do many, many times. So if you can see that, I'm putting this, I put a slice in the pipe. Because, <laughs> oh, give me a little bit more, Matt. Okay, good. Because it'll slide into our opening and then it expands and it locks in place. Perfect. So now you guys can, good. yep. That's all good, it's all good. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter. This screws into the port. Zoller makes such a great pump. I mean, it's even down in this little space, we can set this up. We're gonna put that in there hand tight. Then we need to cut a small riser to, to accept our check valve. Remember the check valve 
only allows water to flow one way. And if you can see those arrows, it's got some type of indication. No matter which check valve you use, it tells you which way the water flow is. This one's got the arrows pointing up, and we're going to secure our riser onto here, and then it comes up, and we're actually going to plumb it all the way over to the main crawl space um, and tie the two lines together. And that's why we have check valves, because the water can only go one way no matter what. So if that other pump kicks on, it can't come back over here. It all goes has to go out the core that we did outside. So let's do that. So it's kind of hard to cut pipe down here because there's not much room, but we'll get it. <clears throat> I just need a small section. I'm trying to use my legs as a vice grip. <laughs> We're good. Another right, another reason why you want to have a nice, sharp hacksaw. And yes, they do make those clampy things that cut pipe off, but inch and a half is pretty hard to use. That um, clamp cutter works great for things under inch you know, for this type of pipe right here, but it doesn't work too good on these, just to let you know. Okay, so next we need the glue. This is again, an all-in-one glue. That means it has primer already built in it. And what I'm gonna do, if I can get to it, <laughs> is go ahead and glue this up. Put a good amount of glue on here and on our male threaded inch and a half adapter. Remember to take good care of your glue because if you spill it, it's not a matter of getting, you know, buying more. It's about you have to crawl back out to get more. So make sure you get your lid on there. Push it into the fitting, give it a little twist, and just hold it in place for just a few seconds. And that's tight. You can see me pulling up the pump nice and tight. It works really good. Now I'm going to set the pump in. Oh, wait. Let's go ahead and set the... Let's put, <laughs> Let's put the check valve on there first. Check valves are held together with no hubs. They're hard rubber plastic, hard rubber, and they have stainless steel clamps. And we want to loosen up the top and the bottom clamps just temporarily. We want to double check our arrows that they're pointing up. And then we can put this on here nice and secure. Just get it to a point where you're able to, you know, get your handy dandy black and decker <laughs> onto those drill bits or onto the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's listen. So now we're tightening up the check valve. Get that on there as tight as it'll go. Let's tighten up the other clamp while we're right here. We don't want it to come apart because it is hard to get back here. Let's get this one too. Good. Nice and tight. Remember, arrows point up. This one's still loose because we're going to put more pipe as it comes up. So let's get the pump down in there. And that looks easy, but again, 30 pounds. And it's kind of heavy. Got our pump set down in the pit. I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to square my pit up a little bit since I've been moving it around. There we go. And next, I need to put... Let me get this cord out of here too. <clears throat> we want to make sure we have a good, nice, easy access to get to our plug. 
people ask a lot about electricity. We do not do electric work. We are not licensed electricians. So what we do is we leave an extension cord um, for temporary power. And for the most part, you can leave that cord on there forever in the day. But when you go to sell the house, your inspector is going to tell you that you need a GFI. And a GFI is a ground fault interceptor. And you see those in your bathroom. And what they do is, if any water or moisture um, gets on the plug, it's going to trip the breaker instantly. So you do need, sorry, you do need a GFI. Um, but this works great. And again, the extension cord, it'll work forever in the day, but you do need one when you go to sell your house. So plan to have your electrician you know, put a GFI, it has to be back here someplace. So depending on where your main breaker box is, that would be your cost. And if it's a long ways away, it's costly. If it's close by, it's not. The garage is right behind, is right there. So the main box is right there, the breaker box. So very, fairly simple for the electrician to bring that in. Okay, so next. <laughs> now, we need another piece of pipe that can come up, and this is almost perfect. We might have to cut it. Maybe not, that looks pretty good. That's our riser, and we'll put a 90 on that riser. Yep, it's perfect. Well, we're gonna have to cut that a little bit shorter. We wanna be underneath of this joist, and we're gonna plumb it back that direction, I'll show you, uh, and then go through the, the main crawl space wall over to the main cross space where it'll connect with the other pipe or the other pump. So let me cut just a little piece off of here and then we'll tighten it all up and glue it and the pump will be installed. Okay, let's make sure we got the right fit. We'll slide it into the check valve. Maybe. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's much better. And then we can put our 90 on there and you can see that we're right up by the top of the joist. And we're gonna use joist hangers That's uh, that holds this up to the joist, but we'll do that later on. So let's go ahead and glue this up and get our first piece of pipe that's gonna go back and make a 90 and go through that wall to the main crawl space. <clears throat> so I'm gonna tighten up this check valve and then I'll show you the how it looks inside. Let me get this ready to go. probably hear that noise behind me and hopefully the GoPro is picking some of that action up but they're bringing in the gravel by the bag because that's the easiest way that I found to move that stuff in a tight crawl space especially when you're going under pipes and wires and all kinds of stuff Perfect. So there's a little bit of play in our check valve, but we'll line that up. So now I'm ready to go ahead and glue the rest of this um, together. Let me find my other camera. I will show you what it looks like here at this point. If I can get to it, <laughs> it is hard to do. So you can see how the pump sets up. <laughs> We've got our Zoller M53, this is an M53, one third of a horsepower. It's got a small riser up to the check valve. Check valve allows water to only go up. And then we have a main riser that comes up and we'll put a 90 up here right by the joist. We're gonna plumb this out through the main crawl space. We've got our footer tile coming in. This is slotted pipe. That means it has holes all the way around it. Small base of gravel underneath. 
And those guys, if you can see them back there, let's see. Can you see them? Yeah, not really. <laughs> they're still pretty far back there, but they're actually moving gravel by the bag. There we go. Can you see them back there? See how they're pulling the gravel? They're about halfway here. It, and it's hard, you can only move that gravel just a, about maybe six or eight inches at a time. Then you rip it open and you just pour it right over top of the pipe. We're covering the footer as well, um, just so we can know that there's enough uh, water flow because it does come through that footer a little bit. Most of it comes from underground here in the deep south. This is, you know, Florida, Lakeland. So most of this is groundwater that rises up. And during a hurricane, and during a hurricane, you know, water, we're talking 30, 40 inches of water that comes. And it usually rains before the hurricane. So there's, you know, 30, 40 more inches. We're talking about a lot of water here. Um, French drain, you know, that's picking up the water. That's pretty simple. But you've got to be able to move that water. And if you don't have a good pump, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Other people ask me the question, what happens when power goes out? Of course, when power goes out, the pump doesn't work. There are battery backups available, but they don't pump enough. They're 12 volt. They don't pump fast enough to do anything. So how does the system keep up? Basically, what happens is when power goes out, it doesn't go out you know, the very instant a hurricane comes, usually in the middle of the hurricane. And this system moves more than enough water to handle the remaining water. So yeah, it may go out, but luckily for the most part, you know, power companies get that power back on pretty quick. Granted, in a hurricane, it can be out for weeks at a time. Um, I can remember when Katrina came across Florida, and of course it did devastation, you know, in Louisiana. But when it came across Florida, the power was out for nearly three weeks in some places. Melbourne, Melbourne Beach, uh, they had no power for three weeks. And I remember lines, uh, two miles long of line trucks, power trucks, coming from all over the country to help out with that. Um, amazing what what we can do today um, as people when we get together. Uh, am I bad? Okay. No. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this up. You can see those guys bringing the gravel. Hey, uh, We're almost to the end here of bringing gravel. A lot of things happening all at once, but I'm gluing up the PVC discharge, and we're using a real good all-in-one cement. No, Remember to take side. care of that glue. <laughs> I have to keep saying that. <laughs> but take this in here, twist it, hold it, and we should be good. Whoa! Leave right there. I got you. That's good. So it's all it's all plumbed right now to the where we're going to make our turn. And once we bring this gravel, we just want to square up our pit, bring that little square, and then we'll plumb this and get the lid on here to make it real secure for anybody else that happens to crawl back here. <laughs> we wouldn't want anybody to have a problem if they came back this far. Yep, yeah, we're almost there. You see that? We're pulling out that gravel. So a great project. So a great project for the do-it-yourselfer. <laughs> Something you could easily do yourself. But you know what? If you do decide to do this, hopefully this video does give you some idea of what's involved in putting in a sump pump and a footer pipe and solving the crawl space issue. And another bag. And we need one more bag to go to help fill it up. Another one. So the reason that we're putting gravel, yep. The reason we're putting, the reason we're putting gravel around the outside is because remember this pit goes down two feet, and the footer pipe is going to collect a whole bunch of water. You may not need to perforate the pit, but in the crawl space, usually I try to perforate the pit because it's down deeper than everything else. Groundwater will rise up and get into the pit, and it's interesting because. Even the water that's way over there on that side of the crawl space will migrate underground to this place because we gave water a place to go. Right now it has no place to go. And that's how a system actually works in all French drains. Give that water a place to go and that water will go there. It's slow, but it does get there.
probably going to be enough when you get that out. Yeah, maybe one more. What do we need that small? Maybe one more, one more. Yep, two more. Two more. Yep, two more, more bags. One more if you got it, actually. How many's left? You got one more to... How many? There's one more bag. Boy, I tell you, Chuck... This Chuck guy. <laughs> oh, this is the only one left? Huh? This is the only bag left? No, that's that one and then there's this one. Yeah, I know. Chuck is, Chuck is like the man. Yep, oh, we need it. Of yeah. course we do. We, 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 uh... People ask the question, you know, how many, how much gravel should you use? And it's like, I couldn't possibly answer that. Basically, I make a guess, <laughs> and uh... and most of the time it's right. <laughs> but yeah, you know, we use 40 bags, and we have one left over. I always have one left over, and I put that on the lid just in case uh, you know just a, a amount of water rushes underneath in here, and we just try to keep some weight on it so it doesn't flood up. How long you do that? <laughs> Perfect. That's all good. So, we're done with our gravel. I'm going to send these guys on back out. They're going to bring me some more pipe, some more inch and a half, and we're going to plumb this on over to the other side. So, let's look at it again. You can see <clears throat> the riser from the sump pump comes up. Then it turns and it goes through to the next crawl space. You see that wall back there? There's a footer there. This is a separate crawl space. So we had to put a sump back here. And back here in that corner, that's where all the water was. Um, you know, that's the bulk of the water is all back there. And you can see it's still wet back there. Um, but yeah, we're ready to go. We're going to hang this with joist hangers to the joist so it's nice and secure and we're almost done. So if you're going to hang your pipe, you could, you know, use, there's a galvanized metal that you could use. We like to use these plastic hangers. They make it really secure, nice and tight. And it's not so much that we're trying to get a fall on the line. That has nothing to do with it. We just don't want it to bounce around down here um, when the pump kicks on. So we use these joist hangers, just like you would their pipe joist hangers. And they work really good. They're about 99 cents a piece, and you only need you know two or three of them depending on how far you're gonna hang that pipe. Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. We are finishing up this uh, crawl space installation. Yesterday we finished um, putting in all the footer tile and the gravel, as you saw, um, and plumbed the, the discharge line outside. I'm going to go back underneath and do just a couple more things. We want to resecure the the uh, inch and a half discharge to the joist, make that really sturdy and secure, because they are going to come in and remove all of that ductwork. Um, I just don't want them to ever have any problems, you know, with our system. So we really hang it tight. We use uh, uh, joist hangers, pipe joist hangers, and that's what these are. They work really good. This is inch and a half, and we'll basically secure the top of that to the joist, and the pipe snaps right in there. Very, very strong, very permanent. Out here in the front, let me show you what the guys are gonna do. So remember, I showed you where we brought the inch and a half pipe out, we cored that wall. That pipe's gonna have a 90 that goes straight down underground, right alongside the foundation wall. Another 90 to bring it towards me. It's gonna be inch and a half, and right around in here someplace or wherever, we're gonna change it to two inch. And the reason being is that we've got two pumps that are pushing water, so we wanna have a little bit larger discharge. Comes through, there's actually an asphalt drive under these pavers, so we're gonna to have to pick through that. Um, and then it comes out, got a major oak tree to contend with. You can see the mound that they have to go through. This is all two inch, and it's gonna come out all the way out to the front, run right through this ivy bed, um, and discharge right over here alongside the driveway. It's a better place for it to discharge than trying to send it to the street. So right in this area, we're gonna put our pop-up in a grate and that water is just gonna flood across the drive and on out, on out into the street. So we're almost finished. You can see we've uh, cut off the discharge pipe as it comes out from the crawl space. What we want to do is we want to make that go straight down into the ground because it, it just looks aesthetically nice to just have that pipe disappear. And then we go, we switched over to two inch and 
make come around we had to go through the asphalt patio under some sprinklers remember that you can use no hubs see that black plastic to kind of help you offset just a little bit not much but a little bit and our trench goes all the way through they're finishing up the last little bit of pipe to connect and then we'll backfill and we're done so we're just making you know the connection there there's a little short piece gluing that together you can see the line comes out had to go underneath of a, another irrigation over here and then we'll make the final connection right here and I can show you that while they're doing that you've seen me do it many times this actually adapts this actually adapts from two inch to our three inch grate and we secure that with a screw if you look at this you'll see we've got a, it's a thin wall PVC fitting and we've got a grate we secured that with a screw and then this is a PVC fitting here and what this is is two inch to three inch and it actually goes around the outer diameter of the thin wall and I know that's confusing but it works really good and it actually glues up it's super tight we do put a screw in it um, just to hold it in place but it glues up well we'll go ahead and glue this fitting onto that two inch pipe when we bring it right out here to the street and this will be set at grade and then as that pump kicks on that water just comes right up out of the grate floods a little bit across the driveway and runs right out into the road where it's supposed to go so here's our completed project you can see there's our discharge remember I showed you how that screws and secures together when that pump kicks on that water will just come out and come right down across the drive and eventually drain down the road whichever way it goes um, put up back all the ivy and you know all the above <clears throat> looks real good you can see the we left it we, we like to leave our mound because this is sand we like to leave it just pound you know mile <laughs> mounded up because it's going to settle so quickly with the rain you can see my foot how quickly that sets down into the soil and we'd rather when you step on this or try to pack it all it's doing is packing it down about an inch two inches let it go down naturally put the pavers back and remember i showed you the discharge so this is a completed install Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.